The Fantic EVO 300 is a portable power station that is best matched with the Fantic 100 watt solar panel. The set features a premium portable design appearing both elegant and durable. The battery has a capacity of almost 300 watt hours and the solar panel can yield a charging power of up to 100 watts. This could make this bundle the perfect companion for your next outdoor adventure, even if, if it's just the park or the far end of your yard. So is this solar power to go package truly the perfect solution for you? Hi, I'm Tina Sieber and I'm based in the Pacific Northwest, a part of the world that's famous for its gorgeous outdoors and a chronic lack of sunshine. When we do see the sun up here, we want to spend as much time outdoors as possible. And that's where something like the Fantic EVO 300 portable power station and its sidekick, the 100 watt solar panel can come in handy. They're ultra portable, so you can grab them anytime to move your office to the backyard or stream the game in the park. This set ships in two boxes. The Fantic EVO 300 portable power station comes with a 90 watt rated power supply, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a car cigarette charging cable, and a soft accessory bag. The 100 watt portable solar panel includes a zipper cable bag and an Anderson charging cable. Fantic didn't skimp on cables. Instead, they kept the amount of paper to a minimum. The power station didn't include a user manual at all. However, I received an open box review unit, so the manual might have gotten lost in transit. The Fantic EVO 300 and the 100 watt solar panel make a great first impression. The EVO 300 looks like your average power station. It's a compact box, gray colored with yellow highlights. Um, it's not raggedized, but it feels solid and well-built. The EVO's highlight is its large LCD screen on the front. It displays the battery charging status, DC and AC status, the input-output wattage, and time remaining to full charge or discharge. It's sufficiently bright to be visible in daylight, but like most LCD screens, you'll struggle to see it in bright sunlight. When the light is right, the lettering is large enough to be seen from a bit of a distance. Below the screen, you'll find three buttons and a selection of input-output ports. Push the button in the center to turn the screen on or off. Use the buttons to its left and right to switch the DC and AC ports on or off. The AC on-off button controls the two AC ports on the right. The DC on-off button controls six of the DC ports on the left, but it doesn't switch off the in-out USB-C port. The back of the unit holds a large floodlight. With the buttons to its left, you can switch from lower to higher brightness and to SOS signaling mode. To the right of the light are two power input ports. The EVO 300 carries a total of seven output ports, including USB-C, USB-A, DC jacks, and a car cigarette lighter port. You can charge the power station via USB-C DC7909 and the Anderson port. The power station sits on two broad rubber feet that give it a stable position. Cooling is provided through internal fans and vents on both sides of the unit. You can pick the EVO 300 up by the large handle on its top. The Fanti 100 watt solar panel appears equally well designed. When you fold the panel, the two sides of the panel snap together by virtue of strong magnets. And they're built into the sturdy carrying handle. One of the handles contains the Anderson output port. Magnets also hold the kickstands in place when the panel is folded up. Unfortunately, they're not super strong, so the stands may swing open and move around slightly when carrying the panel. The solution is to strap the included cable back around the panel for transport. You can use the grommets to the left and right of the handles to hook in the carrying loop, or you could hang the panel up. In its unfolded state, the solar panels rest on two kickstands that are held in place by partially elastic straps. While it's a clever design, it's the only part of the setup that doesn't feel particularly stable. We're also concerned that the elastic strap will loosen and break down over time. The SunPower solar panel consists of separate monocrystalline silicons. They operate independently of each other, meaning damage to one won't render the entire panel useless. The built-in maximum power point tracking or MPPT technology maximizes energy extraction under variable conditions. The panel is ETFE laminated and IP65 rated, which makes it resistant to water jets from any angle. However, Fantic recommends keeping it dry to expand its lifespan of up to 25 years. 
So let's look at the battery life. The Fantic Evo 300 power station runs on lithium ion battery cells with a total capacity of 299.52 watt hours. That's not enough power for off-grid living by any means, but it's sufficient to keep the lights on, your phone and laptop topped up, and enjoy some entertainment at the same time. You can charge the Evo 300 via a DC7909 and Anderson input ports on the back and the USB-C input port in the front. While the maximum input is 120 watts, the included power supply that plugs into the DC port on the back maxes out at 90 watts. However, you can increase the input by simultaneously charging via the input USB-C port in the front. This is a unique solution to increase the total charging power. Theoretically, the dual charging should give you 150 watts of input, but I didn't see it cross 146 watts in my tests. When we plucked the third-party 200-watt solar panel into the Anderson port, the Fantic Evo 300 only registered 116 watts, although the panel was producing over 190 watts according to a third-party battery. How long it takes to charge the power station from completely drained to 100% depends on the power input you choose. You can charge it in as little as two and a half hours when simultaneously charging via the DC7909 and USB-C ports. With the solar panel, you're looking at three and a half hours at least, depending on light conditions. In theory, the solar panel can yield up to 100 watts. The real output depends on weather conditions and light exposure. Naturally, you'll get the best results on a bright sunny day with direct sun exposure sometime between 11 in the morning and four in the afternoon. I tested charging via the solar panel in various conditions. On a rainy day, I only got one watt of power. In full sunlight at eight in the morning, I saw 24 watts, and by 10.20 in the morning, uh, with light haze, the panel yielded 50 watts. At noon on a particularly sunny day, the panel even reached 105 watts, exceeding its rated power by 5%, which I could observe on both the Evo 300 and a third-party power station. At a steady input of 50 watts, the solar panel will charge the power station within six hours. Essentially, you can charge anything that plugs into the station and doesn't draw more than 300 watts with a maximum peak surcharge of 600 watts. That means you can power or charge most of your electronics, including laptops, computers, and smartphones. You won't be able to power something like a hairdryer, a microwave, or a toaster as these appliances draw too much power and also have massive peak surcharges. To calculate how long the power station will last when fully charged, divide its maximum capacity, in this case 299.52 watt hours, by the wattage you'll draw, for example 50 watts. And your result is the amount of hours the battery should last, so 5.99 hours in our example. Keep in mind that the Evo 300's input and output info isn't always accurate. In my tests, I powered a projector while charging the power station with 90 watts, while the projector was drawing 140 watts. The input and output wattage looked accurate, but it also said that the power station would last for 99.9 .9 hours, so forever, and would take just over two hours to a full charge. At the same time, since I took out more energy than I put back in, the charging percentage kept dropping, obviously. And the estimated input-output time didn't change even as the unit reached 0% capacity and shut down. It's not a perpetual mobility after all. The Fantic Evo 300 features internal cooling fans that produce about 60 decibels SPL in an otherwise quiet environment. However, they only seem to kick in when the AC ports are turned on. Occasionally, I found the fans running although the battery wasn't in use. When I pressed the AC on off button to turn the AC ports off, the fans turned off immediately. Fortunately, the fans don't automatically rev up just because you're using the AC ports. Um, though we're not exactly sure what the threshold temperature is. So, what's our verdict here? Now that you have all this information, should you buy the Fantic Evo 300 power station and the solar panel? Well, on the one hand, this is a perfectly matched setup to power you through outdoors adventures and short-lived power outages. While the battery can't run appliances that draw more than 300 watts, like a fridge, air conditioning, or a heater, it can keep your essential electronics topped up and running. At 100 watts, the solar panel can charge the 299.52 watt hour battery in a few hours in full sun. Even when it's hazy, you'll be able to run a laptop and charge a couple of phones off of its power. Both items are portable, easy to store and sturdy, which makes them the perfect companions on road trips, on beach days or afternoons in the park. As I said, the Evo 300 power station and the solar panel are great. If you're looking into purchasing just the solar panel, 
Note that the included Anderson power pole connector might not be compatible with a third-party power station. It's best to find a suitable adapter from, and from the Anderson output to your desired input port first, or alternatively, you could build your own cable. If your electricity frequently cuts out for extended periods of time, or if you need to power large appliances, consider getting a power station with a larger capacity. For example, the Ukitel P2001 with 2000 watt hours of power. It's equipped with an Anderson input port that's compatible with Fantix solar panel, but on the downside, it's quite heavy and hence less portable. And you should also get a larger solar panel to charge this bigger battery. For a more portable option, check out the Jackery Solar Generator 1500, which has a capacity of 1,534 watt hours. It's around 13 pounds or six kilograms lighter than the Ukitel. And if you purchase the Jackery Solar Panel Bundle, the set will come with the necessary cables and adapters included. If you're still not sure, check out our full review, which contains more details and photos and you'll find the link in the description below. And finally, to catch our next review, stay subscribed to our channel.